church family. Thank you so much for being with us this morning in our unique worship experience. As you can see, this is a little bit different than we're used to, but we pray that we can all just continue to make the most of this time. Whether you're worshiping at home with your family or you're by yourself, we want you to know that we're all in this together. You're not alone, and we pray that the Lord gets all the glory. So won't you join us in singing in this next song together as we continue to worship the Lord this morning. Thanks so much for being with us. lost but he brought me oh his love for me yes his love for me whom the sun sets free oh it's free and deep i'm a 
child of God, yes I am. Free at last, He has ransomed His grace was While I was a slave to Psalm 34, verses 1 to 3. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. 
My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Friends, that's the call on all of us as the church of Jesus Christ to come together and to lift up his name. Thank you to the worship team. I am so proud of what you guys have done. That's so innovative, so creative. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope you had a good time of worship this morning. Well, welcome uh, to church online. Church a little bit differently, but church nonetheless. Just a few things in the way of orientation as you're online. If you're at church online, uh, you will see that there is a number of buttons, some for social media, some to go back to a website. But there's one button in particular that I want to draw your attention to, and that is the button to request prayer. We would love to take time to pray with you. If you click that button, you will go through to a singular person, and they would love to pray for you even though it's online. I'd ask you to stay with us right through to the end as uh, there are a couple of news and announcement slots that we need to take care of this morning. But it is my privilege to be able to bring the Word of God to you this morning. In recent history, horrific events, deeply painful events took place. I'm referring to December 2004 when a massive tsunami hit coastal cities and towns in Asia. This took the lives of over 250,000 people. You can imagine people being deeply impacted, not only in those nations, but all around the world. But what took place following that event was kindness and compassion rose up from all over the world. In fact, never before had there been so much international aid given to any crisis. Along with that, as people flooded those nations in rescue efforts, there were stories that started to emerge of self-sacrifice and kindness and compassion. It was amazing what happened. We remember September 11, 2001. The absolute worst day for New York City, that day reverberated all around the world and continues to this day. I remember two years later after that, that the lights went out all along the East Coast. In fact, I was in this church when that happened and I remember seeing scenes of New York City and how in this incredible heat in the summertime, people taking care of one another and coming together in just amazing unity. Something so powerful happened in New York City in those two occasions and no nonsense hustling city found its heart, found compassion, found kindness. I remember after 9-11 seeing photographs being sent to me from New York, but not only New York, all around the United States. You could hardly go to any street where you didn't see the stars and stripes waving outside of people's homes. In Asia and then in the United States with these deeply painful moments of crisis, nations were in unity because of these crises. It says in James chapter 1 and verse 2, it says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. You see, I love that scripture. And I've heard it quoted many times during tough times. But the more I understand the heart of God and the more I understand the scriptures, I start to see how important crisis is and what it produces in the hearts of human beings all throughout the ages. My title for the message this morning is simply this blessed crisis. You see shared ordeal binds us together in a much deeper way. It produces something that was not there before. Because our casual community and what we've been accustomed to is under threat. In times of crisis, we value each other in a way that we didn't value each other before. In times of crisis, we look to God in a whole new way as being 
all-knowing when we don't know what is going to happen, as being all-powerful and our hope in times of trouble, and being all-present as the comforter as we need comfort. So again, I will affirm and reiterate what James says. He says, count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. I don't know about you, but I found during this time, my interactions have been different. I had internet trouble this past week, and I had to call into a call center. And at the end of the call, I said to the young man, I said, thank you so much for serving me, and thank you for serving the public in the way that you've been doing. I could hear he was a little stressed out. He paused, and he ended the call in a way that I've never heard a call ended before. He said, thank you, sir. Stay healthy and stay safe. It's definitely producing something in our midst, this crisis is. Something is taking place on the earth and something incredible, I believe, can take place in the church of Jesus Christ. The Lord is busy right now changing the world. I found myself saying again and again and again that we are right in the center of history being written. The world will never ever forget 2020. I would say this as well. The church cannot just simply return back to what it was. This will produce something really powerful as we go forward in serving Jesus. Absolutely, we will get back to gathering together. We will get back to ministries being run, our activities going back in terms of scheduling to, to what they were. We look forward to that day. I can't wait for the day that I get to meet you at the entrance of the church and shake your hand or possibly give you a hug as, it, as you walk in. But we need to understand that there is a massive change and a massive shift that is happening globally the church is undergoing a trial because we cannot meet together but we rejoice in this change and the shift that is happening i have a deep sense that right now god is stirring up our hunger he's stirring up our hunger for for what he deems as a priority and he's stirring up our hunger for following Him, for serving Him, for gathering together in community. What God is also doing is He is breaking off apathy that existed in our lives. I do believe, though, in this season we have a choice. And I want to encourage you to make the right choice. Lean in to what God is doing in this time. It's quite amazing that as we get into the pages of Scripture, we read how God would move and speak powerfully to groups of people in the midst of crisis and discomfort. Every single time, starting in Genesis, we read about how God spoke to Abram and said to him, you need to move, but I'm not going to tell you where. You need to go, but I will tell you when the time's right. And the scripture accounts that Abram obeyed. Genesis chapter 12 and verse 4, it says, So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Let's, let, let, let's just understand some context here. Abram's household and family was around about 70 people. Abram was 75 years old when he embarked on a journey where he didn't know where he was going. Abram obeyed the call of God. I want to say this to you that I believe God is calling us right now to brutal obedience to His Word. Almost like never before. And you and I know what we need to start doing. We both know what we need to stop doing. And we know in our lives what exists that we need to continue to do in our walk as we serve Jesus. Abram's obedience sealed a covenant from God of blessing, of favor, protection, and even of land and territory, that he would become the father of many nations. See, God protects the children of Israel as they're in crisis in Egypt under slavery. 
He does a powerful work at the time of Passover when he delivers them from that slavery. And then he continues his powerful work with them and in them through the season in the wilderness. These times and these seasons shaped the people of God to this very day. And what was the catalyst for all of that? Crisis. Discomfort. The exile into Babylon was a harsh time for God's people. It led into all kinds of persecution for their faith. And being in captivity under harsh dictatorial leadership, this was a crisis time for the people of God. But it changed the whole way that they related to God. All through the pages of Scripture, we see this taking place time and time and time again. Until we read about God's crowning work that started on a terrible Friday and ended three days later with Jesus, Son of God, taking the sin of the world upon Himself and making a mockery of death, hell, sin, and the grave. This was a week of all-out crisis. There was incredible ordeal involved. But what it means for us, it means victory. It means life. It means healing. It means the forgiveness of sin. We read also about the early church. Paul, we read about Paul. We read about the prophets. We read about leaders and people being martyred for their faith all throughout the ages. And how God does a powerful work in times of crisis. We read about how the early church was formed you know, in this incredible persecution. I spoke a little bit about that last week. And how the gospel was spread throughout the earth. We read as, as people would serve God and be convicted by the word of God. How some people got into translating the Bible. Translating the Bible for common people just like me. That I could have the scriptures to hand in my home. Even if you think about modern day miracles, they are the work of God that no person, no person should boast. But miracles come out of crisis. If there wasn't a crisis, there would be no need for miracles. If someone is desperately ill, they're in need of a miracle. If someone is, is, is lost and has no hope and has no future and more importantly has no relationship with God, they're in need of the miracle of salvation. It's crisis that require the miracles and the work of God. Crisis also forms the way that we relate to people. And I know this to be true firsthand. Uh, you may have experienced this yourself. I think the first time it happened to me was when I went to the military, when I, when I started boot camp. I arrived and I, I got put with my platoon and I knew not one single person. And then what happened after that is we went into 12 solid weeks of intense and brutal and what we called torture. It wasn't actual torture, it just felt like that at the time. And I tell you something, there were bonds formed in that time during boot camp that still exist today, 26 years later, where we still connect with one another, we still reflect on some of the things that we went through. We went off after 12 weeks and we served in different areas in the country, on different ships, even on different oceans. But we've remained friends ever since. You see, crisis or ordeal or that kind of thing bring people together in almost an abnormal way. We figure things out about one another that we wouldn't have had we not been in a season of crisis. Think of some of the world's greatest stories. Think of some of the world's greatest movie plots. A group of people, they're on a mission together. They need to do something, save someone, save something, stop something. And there's never just the one person. They always link up with someone else or link up with a group of people. And they, under, they undergo great tests and trials and bullets are flying at them or whatever the case may be. And then 
It comes to nearing the end of the story. They've achieved the mission. And the music starts playing softly. And illustrated is this great bond that is formed between people. You can think about some of your favorites. These are some of mine. The, the Bourne series. Band of Brothers. One of my all-time favorites. Saving Private Ryan. The Lord of the Rings. I mean, if you think about the Lord of the Rings for a second, that group of people are literally known as the Fellowship of the Ring. You see, the ring becomes not very important in that film or those series of films. It's actually about the bonds that are formed. We think about the Chronicles of Narnia. And if you want to throw another one in there for good measure, you can even think of Finding Nemo. Now, I know that's not people, that's fish, just to be clear that I'm not confused. You see, we are designed for deep connection. We need deep connection, especially when we're on mission. And friends, if you don't know this already, as a Christ follower, we are always on mission. Deep connection and community, folks, can be powerful. When we come together around mission, things happen. Revivals break out. People are served at unprecedented levels. Suffering is alleviated. The Holy Spirit moves in communities, bringing deep and powerful revelation. Signs and wonders happened. And there is biblical precedent for this over and over and over again, all throughout history. But I want to take your attention to a portion of scripture that just encapsulates this so well. It's from Acts chapter 2, starting in verse 42. It says this, And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many signs and wonders were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. Do you see how the theme of that deep connection as that incredible community is all throughout this passage? It continues in verse 45. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. You see, even though they were gathering together, even though they were deeply connected, mission still continued. I want you to see this picture right now, forming in the street where you live. Folks, God has appointed you to be a witness on your street. God has appointed you for this time to be a help and to be a, 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 a messenger of the gospel of Jesus Christ on your street. I would encourage you, reach out to some of your neighbors. Even if you have to leave a note with your, with your phone number on there, reach out to them. Tell them that you're praying for them. Tell them to reach out if they have a need. You see, them thanking you or them, you know, coming to know Jesus, that's not for you to be concerned with. The fruit of you doing that, that's up to God. In Acts chapter 9, this is where we read about Paul's Damascus Road experience, his, his conversion. It says he's on his way and he's on his way and it says he's still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord. In other translations of the Bible, it says the same thing, but it, was, it, it didn't call them the disciples of the Lord. It called them people of the way. The disciples of the Lord, people the, of the way. This was the deeply connected, unified group of Christians. So strong was their community. So strong was their bond. They, they couldn't be singled out. People would just aim at a group of, of people, a group of people that were on mission, and the mission was the message of the gospel. 
Friends, deep connection and community are so powerful, especially in times of crisis. John chapter 13 and verse 34. Jesus says, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. You see, there it is. As you love one another, just as I have loved you, Jesus says, you also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Right there. Right there. You see, at one time, I would have read that passage and thought, Oh, that's nice. That's a sweet sentiment. Wouldn't that be great if everyone in church just got along and they hung out together and we're all friendly. Friends, it goes way deeper than that. I want you to see, as Jesus is saying that we ought to love one another, this is not just a nice thing that we all have warm and fuzzy feelings. No, this is a strategy of warfare against the evil one. This is an active, forcefully advancing, kingdom-hearted strategy that we love one another. In times of crisis, we've got to have that love for one another because this is the time that it really matters. You see, the enemy of deep connection and of mission is simply this. It's comfort and convenience. I'm going to say that again. The enemy of deep connection and mission is comfort and convenience. It gets in the way of mission and it makes us take our community for granted. And we are in a time of crisis right now. It's calling out for us to be deeply connected while remaining on mission. The mission of God has not stopped because we're not allowed to leave our homes. It continues. Let's make this time of crisis really count. Let's make it really count. God is still on mission in the world and he's still on mission in you and I. He is busy doing a deep work, conforming us to the likeness of the sun. Our rhythms are not the same, and maybe, friends, that's a good thing. So here's what that means for us. I want to ask you, get connected. Get connected where you already have relationships. Gather with the people of God. Gather, take time to spend some time in the Word Pray together and encourage one another. It doesn't have to be a long time. Use whatever technology you have available to you to make that happen. Start with one person. Gather at least four to ten people. You can do that online, I promise. And I would love that you let us know so that we can encourage you and help you where necessary and we can encourage other people as we hear about these online communities starting to form and start to build. Let's address this crisis on the solution side and allow God to move in us and in our communities like he hasn't before. You can reach out to us at info at mylibertychurchusa.org either for help or to let us know that you've started a group. This coming week also, remember I said the mission of God has not stopped we will make available some resources that you are able to help other people. What I mean by that is we will make a time and place for you to drop goods off, hopefully food and groceries, that we can help people in our community and even in our church. God is realigning His church at this time. Let's come together so that we can comfort each other, that we can encourage each other, but that we can stay on mission. As it says in Acts chapter 2 and verse 42, make sure to devote yourself to the Word of God and to hearing the teaching of the Word of God. Take time in your home with your family even or start on your own if needs be and break bread. Break bread as we pray for people's healing And as we pray for God to stop this virus and the spread of this virus. Remember to gather together. 
however you do that start to gather with your family I- at your dinner table gather together make it count and gather with other believers online in whatever way that you can and as this passage says keep praising god keep praising god keep worshiping worshiping him keep looking to him in this tough time even when things get overwhelming and frustrating keep looking to god i want to read to you the scripture that i started off with this morning it's from psalm chapter 34 It says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. You see, a singular voice is good. A few people lifting up the name of God together, that's amazing. But as we gather together deeply as the community of the church, it magnifies the name of the Lord, magnifies literally to make it bigger. That everyone around knows that we serve a God of hope, of life, and of peace. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the gift and the revelation and the truth of your word. I pray, God, that you would write that truth on the tablets of our hearts. Lord, that we would continue to be the church, even though we've had to change form and method. I pray, Lord, for the continuation of your mission, where we get to be in your word, where we get to worship together, but Lord, that we could connect together in a deep way. Lord, I pray that you bless these gatherings. Lord, I pray for a move of the Holy Spirit as people gather together online. I pray also for those people choosing today to start to follow you. You may be choosing today to start to follow Jesus. It could be For the very first time, maybe for you it's the first time in a long time because you were following Jesus at one time and and things have gone wrong. I want to encourage, I want to encourage you today that you made right with God. I want to pray for you. Jesus, we know when you gave your life on the cross, you purchased our healing new life you gave us forgiveness of sin so we declare together today that we want to follow you all the days of our lives we thank you for what you've done please reveal yourself to me lord god in jesus name amen if you responded today if you've chosen today to become a follower of jesus in a second There will be a button on your screen where you can let us know that you've done that. And there will be someone that will connect with you and help you on your journey. Amen. I just got a couple more things to say. Firstly, please, we'd like you to look out for our emails that go out twice a week. We'd also like you to just keep having a look at social media. We want you to be informed as possible. We also want to be able to connect with you. That's why social media is so helpful. We'll also make available this week some space for you to drop off some food parcels if you can, if you're able to do that. So uh, we're going to let you know about that in the email and on social media. If you don't receive our email and would like to, please email us at info at mylibertychurchusa.org. I also want to thank everyone uh, for continuing to give. You know, when we give, we give as unto the Lord. We give as our worship. And and thank you for continuing to do that. We have amazing platforms that enable us to continue. Uh, You can give using our My Liberty Church app. You can give online on the website. You can use text to give. 
and you will see right now one of the options when you give online one of the options just says COVID-19 this is if you have means and God has laid, has laid it on your heart to be able to help people because they faced a cut in their paycheck or they, or they lost their jobs if you can help in that way you can use that option when you give this morning so thank you for being with us this morning it's been great for us to gather together children's ministry will uh, go up very shortly you can get your kids around the computer screen or around the television and they can listen to their teaching you can pray with them and let's continue to gather together in deep connection and continue the mission and the work of God amen God bless you We'll connect with you soon.